so in last class we have seen the greedy methods uh, now uh, today um, we will start another problem last class we know that we have discussed the interval scheduling problems now today is the next problem of uh, the interval partitioning scheduling all so what do you mean by interval partitioning suppose uh, uh, there are five classes okay five or say, say ten classes are there for example and uh, 10 theory classes will be there and uh, you may assume more general means the each theory class uh, consists of uh, different hours different hours means it may be scheduled for two hours another class is for one hour another class is for half an hour or another class for, for 45 minutes like that okay so more general it um, now uh, you know that the two different class cannot be taken at the same room so there will be conflict so what we have to do we have to allocate classrooms in such a way that there are no conflicts means if the two lectures are occurring at the same time they must be scheduled in two different room now the question is that if you have been given say n number of lectures okay uh, then how many minimum number of classrooms will be required to schedule all the lectures this is the problem so we can now uh, think that each lecture is an interval because uh, say lecture j this is the lecture j okay so lecture j starting time is sj and finishing time is fj so that means sj comma fj these are the two arguments starting time finishing time and this is for the lecture j so in this way there are n number of pairs see this is one pair two pairs so n lectures are there or we can say these are the intervals because this is the interval you see starting time to finishing time this is starting time and this is the finishing time of the jth interval or jth lectures whatever you will say now you have to find out the minimum number of classrooms to schedule all the lectures so that no two will occur at the same time in the same room so for example in this figure you see there are 10 lectures now how many rooms will be required you see this is room one room one where i am asking a a you see this this line this is this indicates the room one fine so another is the room two this this room this is room three and this is room four and here you see in any room no two lectures are ex um, uh, at the, uh, occurring at the same time fine so there are four rooms so there are four classrooms are required to schedule 10 lectures but you see we can schedule means we can minimize the number of classrooms to execute all the 10 lectures how you see the figure means so here what happens that in room one i am executing a e h if previously a f and i was executed so room here you see that only three schedules are enough means three part means three classrooms are enough so how many minimum number of classrooms will be required for n lectures okay here there are few lectures that's why you can manipulate you can do it yourselves but if there are n is very large so thousand number interval intervals has been given how can you do that so you see what will be the lower bound on the optimal solution lower bound lower bound means not the time complexity i am not asking the time complexity what should be the lower bound of the optimal solution means at least these many classrooms will be required i would like to know this what is that so here you check definition the depth of a set of open intervals the depth of a set of open intervals is the maximum number that contains any given time this is the definition of the depth so 
the depth of a set of open the maximum number that contains any given time. Now you see number of classrooms needed will be greater than equal to depth. Here you see what is the depth in this case. If I draw a line like this, vertical line, it intersects one, two, three. So depth is three. Clear? So now you see in the previous case also, you may think that in this figure depth is three, but in the previous case depth was four, not like that. You see, you draw here at any positions. One, two, three. Clear? Here you may think it is one, but I, I should know the what is the maximum. No? So here you check one, two, three. Similarly, here one, two, three. So maximum is three. So this is the depth. So depth of the schedule. So what do you mean with depth? That means at the same time, how many lectures are occurring? Maximum number of lectures are occurring at the same time. So if at the same time, say four or say 10 lectures or say 50 lectures are occurring at that time, that means I need at say four or uh, 50 classrooms. If, they, if uh, at the same time, 50 lectures are occurring, that means I need at least 50 classrooms, 50 different classrooms for all those 50 lectures. So that's why the number of classrooms needed must be greater than or equal to the depth. So that this depth is the lower bound. Okay, so depth of the schedule below is, means in this case three. So schedule below is this optimal. Now, how what will be the algorithm for this? You see. This is the giddy algorithm. The consider the lectures in the increasing order of the start time. Means I will sort the lectures in such a way that their starting times is like this s1 to sn s1 is less than equal to s2 s2 is less than equal to s3 like this and assign lectures to any compatible classroom how so sort the intervals or lectures by starting time so that this now i will assign a depth d depth value d initially it is zero why it is zero because there are no lectures scheduled in any classrooms means number of allocated classroom is zero. Now for j equal to one to n, for j equal to one to n means I will process all the lectures. If any lecture j, if lecture j is compatible with some classroom k, with the some classroom k, then I will schedule the lecture j in classroom k. Means if there are compatible, what do you mean by comp compatibles? That means there are no conflicts. Conflicts means time conflicts. There are no conflicts on time. That means if lecture J is compatible with some lecture class classroom K, then we suppose classroom K is vacant at that moment. Then I will schedule the lecture in the classroom K. Otherwise, if all the classrooms are busy with some other lectures, then what should I do? I should allocate a new classroom. I will open another classroom with value d plus one and schedule the lecture j in the classroom d plus one. And what I will do, I, the d value will be increased to d plus one. Here you see I am allocating the new classroom d plus one. Okay, and scheduling the lecture in the So d value should be increased. Fine. So in this way, it will, I'll carry on. So how much time it will take? It will take n log n. For each classroom k, you n log n means you know this sorting is n log n. Okay. And I am uh, using this the for loop n times and I am doing this. So everything, all the operations can be done in n log n total. So this now for each classroom k, I have to maintain the finish time of the last job. Suppose the this is the classroom k. Okay kth classroom k classroom k okay so better is indicating anyway so for each classroom k maintain the finish time of the last job see there are so many jobs that has been here this i mean or this is the uh, lecture and suppose this is the last lecture so when the last lectures what is the finishing time of the last lecture that i should know Otherwise, I, how can I assign the new uh, job or say new uh, lectures on this classroom? 
that's why for each classroom we have to maintain a finishing time finish time of the last job added and keep the classroom in a priority queue priority queue means you know hip okay so in this way i'll implement and here you see this is the giddy algorithm never seduce two incompatible lectures in the same classroom that is in our logic i have already said that if the, the lecture j is compatible with some classroom k then i will assign otherwise not so this is observation and theorem giddy algorithm is optimal how suppose d be the value of the number of classrooms d be the number of classrooms that are giddy algorithm allocates our algorithm allocates number of classrooms now classroom D is open when because we needed to schedule a job say J that is incompatible with all the D minus one other classrooms all other D minus one classrooms were allocated means uh, in uh, some job was uh, some lecture was uh, uh, occurring on at the uh, D minus one classrooms that's why we need to open a classroom D there so it was incompetent. So now since we sorted by start time, since we sorted by start time, all the intervals. So all these incompatibles are caused by the lectures that start no later than SJ. Why this incompatible occurs with the D minus one? That means suppose this is the job J is SJ starting time, finishing time SJ. Now I could not allocate this job J on other classroom because they are uh, what is it? All the cause lectures means they this means suppose K K is see if K is here means K S K okay. finishing time it may be here or here whatever it may be so if K so I cannot allocate S J on this room. Where SK is easy because SK, SK, this is less than SJ and FK is less than negative than SJ. So that is so that means that's why I could not allocate. So thus we have D lectures overlapping. So we have now, therefore, we have D lectures means I need D rooms overlapping at time SJ plus epsilon. When I am allocating, I am starting this job already d minus one lectures are going on so including this total number of lectures will be is j is a deep total number of lectures will be d d minus one plus one means d and now this is a starting time so if i draw a vertical line at sj plus epsilon this epsilon epsilon means what what is the value epsilon is very small value greater than equal to zero so in that case you will get the intersections so the key observation i know already in last uh, that uh, lower bound case so therefore all the schedules use must be greater than equal to d, um, d classrooms okay so i am stopping today i can't uh, tell anymore because the laptop battery is very low so i will uh, next class i will uh, say the accident left checking problem Sir, could you upload the slides to this later? I will on, upload. Sir. I must. I must upload. Thank I you. must upload. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir.